requirements of life. To arise, life needs three things matter, energy, and time. All can be found wherever there are stars. Each star is like a scratch-off lottery ticket, a chance to win by having the right combination. The prize, the universe gains a new planet full of life. The chance a ticket pays off remains unknown, but science has made progress in estimating the odds. Given the huge number of tickets, there are 10 to the power of 22 stars in the observable universe, the chances seem good that more than one has paid off. Let's review the specific requirements life has for matter, energy and time. Matter Matter is the stuff life is made of, the building blocks. These are the chemical elements, hydrogen, oxygen, carbon, nitrogen, and so on. These elements exist everywhere. They're created as byproducts of fusion, the ash of nuclear fires which burn in every star. Quote, the nitrogen in our DNA, the calcium in our teeth, the iron in our blood, the carbon in our apple pies were made in the interiors of collapsing stars. We are made of star stuff. End quote. Carl Sagan Hydrogen, oxygen, carbon, and nitrogen make up over 99% of the atoms in our bodies. The others are needed only in trace amounts. These same four elements that compose the bulk of our bodies are also the most common chemically active elements in the solar system. The same physics and chemistry that operate here apply everywhere in the universe. The familiar elements on Earth are found in every star and galaxy we see. This is more than conjecture. Through analysis of light astronomers can determine the chemical composition of faraway stars, nebulae, and galaxies. Complex organic, carbon-containing, molecules, the precursors to life including amino acids, have been detected in distant star-forming gas clouds, or stellar nurseries near the center of the galaxy. So you are made of the same stuff as stars, planets, comets and gas clouds. Given the availability of these vital ingredients, the whole universe is filled with the matter needed for life. But life still needs energy, and enough time to evolve. Energy All life feeds on energy. Energy forestalls the natural tendency towards disorder. Any time order is created, such as in growing a body, energy must be expended. Plants obtain energy from sunlight and store it in chemical bonds. Animals get energy from plants, by eating them and breaking those bonds to release energy, or they eat other animals. The energy that drives the entire food chain and powers all living things on Earth started in the core of our sun. The same fusion responsible for cooking the chemicals of life provides stars, and life, their energy. Though all life needs energy, not every life form gets it from sunlight. Europa, one of Jupiter's moons, appears on the surface to be a frozen ball of ice. But scientists believe that 10 miles under its frozen surface lies an ocean with twice the liquid water of Earth's oceans. What provides the energy to melt this ice? The tides? Tidal friction creates heat that could melt the ice and provide energy for life. Ultimately this energy comes from the spinning of Jupiter. As Europa's own tidal forces drag on Jupiter, Jupiter's rotation slows and its days become longer. The oldest known life forms used geothermal, rather than solar energy. They got their energy from hydrothermal vents like the Lost City, undersea geysers powered by the heat of Earth's interior. Life uses energy wherever it finds it. In 2017, researchers discovered fossilized hematite tubes that are 4.28 billion years old. This is the oldest evidence for life known. In comparison, Earth is 4.54 billion years old and its oceans, 4.41 billion years. Once conditions permitted, it didn't take long for life to start. Time The final requirement for life is time, time for life to arise and evolve. 
After the formation of Earth, it took a few hundred million years for life to appear. Several billion more were needed to evolve multicellular life. It took a total of 4.3 billion years to get to mammals, and 4.5 billion to yield a tool-making civilization. To progress through these stages required an environment that remains stable for long periods. The large stars exhaust their nuclear fuel and explode or collapse after millions of years. This time is too short to host planets with complex life. But in their demise they give hope to others. The elements baked in their cores is what enables life in other star systems. This explains why life could not appear much earlier in the universe's history, several generations of large stars had to form, live, die, and explode to spread their ash, the stuff of life, into interstellar space. Smaller stars are needed to tend to a life-bearing planet. They offer sufficient time for life to do its thing. The lifespan of a star depends on its mass. The smaller its size the longer it lives. Medium-sized stars like our Sun last for billions of years. Smaller stars, like red dwarfs, can live for trillions. Time is one thing the universe is not in short supply of. But life also needs stability. For a planet to nurture life, it must provide stability. It needs a stable orbit, and a host star with a consistent brightness. The planet must also avoid potentially life-ending calamities, asteroid impacts, supervolcanoes, and gamma-ray bursts. Earth has had her own share of catastrophes. The Moon is thought to have formed when Earth collided with a Mars-sized planet called Thea. It's also believed that at one time the entire surface of Earth was covered in ice. Despite these, and many asteroid impacts and supervolcanoes, once it got started life has held on, 